Welcome to the Touching Into Presence podcast. This podcast is for people who are interested in body work, empowerment, and somatic based practices. I am Nikki Olson. I'm Andrew Rosenstock. We are certified Rolfers. Collectively, we're trained in various movement and bodywork therapies with an emphasis on somatic awareness and client resilience. Through conversations, our goal is to share and explore mind-body paradigms to offer empowerment possibilities. We're grateful to be in conversation with Jean Louise Green today. Jean Louise became a licensed massage therapist in Hawaii in 1987. And in 1991, she completed her basic SI training program from the Guild for Structural Integration. Her book, Structural Integration and Energy Medicine, a handbook of advanced body work, was published in 2019. In that year, Green also completed the advanced SI training program through the Guild. Jean Louise is a professional member of the Guild for Structural Integration, the International Association of Structural Integrators, and the Associated Body Work and Massage Professionals. She lives and works in Chico, California, where she maintains a full-time structural integration practice. In today's conversation, we talk with Jean Louise about her history in SI work, the energetic side of Dr. Rolf's work, Dr. Jim Oshman and his guidance of the science of SI, Jean's book, What It's About, How It Evolved, and she'll also discuss sections and tips from the book. So with that, let's begin our talk. Hi. Hi. Both of you are there. We're both hey. here. Awesome. Uh, All right. Yeah. Thank you, both of you, for inviting me on your show. I'm so excited. Yeah. We're I excited to have, have you. I have to say, I didn't know much, and then I started reading more in to your work and I just bought your book. <laughs> <laughs> cool, very cool. Yeah. As a practitioner, I would love to know how that works for you. Are, are you a practitioner, Nikki? I am. My work is heavily influenced in movement. And I don't, I mean, I would say I, I'm in relationship with the energy aspect of the work. It's not, I just felt it, I know it's there. I haven't given much language to it. Are you both from the Rolfings? Oh, all yeah. right. Cool. Uh, but we love talking to Guild people and we love sharing Guild people because a lot of our, at this point, a lot of our audience is more Rolf Institute um, because that's who, that's who we have access to. And we're, we're working on trying to, to, to have all SI and then also all the world. Um, yes. But I think it's really helpful to have Guild people on because it, it starts to create new bridges um, that have been burned long ago. Yes. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's, I mean, I think for both of us, it's really important that the more information you have, the more discernment you can have. And, yes. and so we, we, we take these pictures and we paint bigger and bigger and bigger pictures for people to, to take what they want out of that. Well said. Thank you. So, why don't we get into a little bit about you, Jean Louise? Sort of what um, what what brought you to the work? Um, sort of how you yeah how you got started in in this area? Sure, um, I was a gymnast in my early days, and um, I actually came across a uh, person who had a school of massage in Keao, Hawaii which is where I lived. And working at that school of massage was a rolfer named David Sagala. And I got to experience the 10 session series through David. That was my first experience of the work and it, it really blew me away. Um, his level of wisdom, the changes in my body, I knew that this was phenomenal work. And in the second session, I looked at David and I said, I want to do this work someday. And he was so sweet. He was really kind. And uh, he actually helped introduce me to other rolfers on the islands, which was great. And then <clears throat> I did my research 
connecting into where I really wanted to go to school. And he also suggested checking out the Guild. Uh, that was back in 1991, and this was about three years, I think, after the split. So um, I did connect with the Guild, and I found them very warm-hearted and very easy to uh, feel comfortable with. And they answered, they took the time to answer so many of my questions. And from the heart connection with Susan Melchior, I just, I was sold. I was like, okay, this is going to be it. And it took me about four years to get it together to raise the money to, to go to school at that time. And um, I will never regret it. I feel like I found my life path with the work and at least one of them. And the changes that I got in my own body from receiving the work with David were remarkable. Um, the anterior pelvis <coughs> that I had from my gymnastics, that um, did not become horizontal in my first 10 series. When I did go to school, when I trained at the Guild, in the presence of, um, let's see, in the presence of one, one of my teachers, oh my gosh, I guess I'm kind of nervous. Anyway, in, in the presence of one of my teachers there and also another practitioner, um, I was able to get in the fifth session, uh, both of my psoas is lengthened. And in the process of doing that, I stood up <clears throat> and I felt the floor supporting me probably for the first time in a long time and i felt this sense of ease in my body um it was it was quite a phenomenal experience and um i went outside and i remember running skipping hopping i was overjoyed and i felt this big sense of relief in my body like wow finally i felt like i was i was at home in my body so that was big for me. And I realized this is the kind of work I wanted to do for others. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about, so you're talking about this, the gymnastics pelvis, this anterior right. tilt. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> often, you know, we talk about our bodies go into various positions because there's a demand or need or, you know, maybe there's an injury. So clearly the anterior pelvis, I'm guessing, I'm not a gymnast, but there was, there was a benefit for from it, correct? Well, I think it was more for show. <laughs> okay. All right. So the the big yeah, I, I just pulled off that it. move. Okay. And also, there was great flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. And in the process of doing that, it pushes the fifth lumbar vertebra forward, weakening it even more so, and. The conditioning that I was doing as a gymnast, uh, leg lifts, crunches, you know, the abdominal strengthening and conditioning, we were not trained at that time to pull the belly button back towards the back of the spine like Pilates does now. So as you guys know, as practitioners, the psoas is connected right to that lumbar spine. If the rectus abdominis is bulging forward in a crunch, the uh, the psoas muscles are pulling forward as well, creating more of that excessive arch in the lower back. So for me, it also related into my emotional body because for my body to have an anterior pelvis, there was a, a psychological kind of disconnect with feeling supported within the gravitational field. Not that I could really voice that at the time, you know, but after I got my pelvis horizontal and felt the ease and the connection, there was less efforting. My body wasn't straining um, at a deeper level to hold myself up and <laughs> to prevent myself from falling forwards. So that, that really was a big deal for me. There were also rotation patterns in my body as a gymnast, and um, I had a pretty strong 
uh, right to left rotation pattern with an internal rotation on the right leg, external on the left. And that actually got cleaned up uh, as my psoas is balanced. So that was, that was also uh, really significant for me. And again, it's something that I realized I really wanted to be able to do for others. So it took me a while to put that together. But after years of working with clients in a clinical setting, I just realized that there are um, kind of, um, I can look at the body and sense these rotation patterns and also have a sense of how they're going to show up in the body. And I wrote about that in the book, in uh, my book called Structural Integration and in Energy Medicine. And the first part, part one, uh, has a section on fascial tissue and rotation patterns. And uh, the rotation pattern aspect that I wrote about, I think was written very clearly. Uh, one of my current clients is a, a chiropractor, and uh, she read my book, and as she's experienced the work, she said that her understanding of uh, rotation patterns in the body was actually really revolutionary from what she learned experiencing the SI work with me, speaking with me, reading about it in the book. And she said that it really informed her chiropractic practice where she was able to do her, her adjustments even more specifically. And she said that she has gotten some really, uh, really great results that are very noticeable um, since she has come into learning about structural integration. So I loved that to hear a, a chiropractor of 37 years experiencing the work, being released of rotation patterns in her own body, which um, compromised her significantly from the work she was doing. Um, and then also to be able to apply that knowledge to her work with clients, uh, it, was, it, really, um, it really just felt so good for me to hear that, yeah. It's really beautiful. I've been dealing with some of my own rotational patterns uh, that I've kind of started to notice in myself. So now I'm thinking, how do I get to Hawaii right now? And see, <laughs> and see. I'm in Chico, uh, man. I'm in Chico. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're in Chico. That's right. <laughs> um, but, you, yeah. you, you know, you touched on something I really enjoyed there about your first 10 series. It wasn't like the first 10 series you had it and you're like, ta-da, you know, everything is, is perfect. I'm sure the first 10 series helped a lot and it did a lot yes. but as you went through it more continued to to unravel and, and you still did That's need right. and because i remember in my uh, training this was a topic a lot i think depending who you ask you hear different answers about is the 10 series you just do once and then you're done the rest of your life do you do it and then you wait <laughs> five years you know six months what you know you hear different different <clears throat> answers from from everyone sure uh, about that yeah, I think a lot of that, too, um, has to do with um, the knowledge of the practitioner with their own body. And um, it was my observation that my, uh, my original practitioner, their pelvis was not horizontal. And um, I think that the experience of opening that up and balancing that in a three-dimensional way within the body, um, I think the more we embody that through our own personal experience of it, the easier it is to actually understand and be able to share that work with others. Does that make sense? <laughs> it, not only does it make sense, I, I wanna like put you in a bottle and just keep you with me. I, I just, I really enjoy the way you speak and the way you, you say what you say. It really, I resonate, especially right now with it very much. And I hope that uh, our listeners get something out of that. And um, Nikki, how's that resonating for you? Do you agree, disagree? 
A little bit. I mean, I, I think it's spot on in talking about the the elements of of uh, the practitioner have integrated the work. Uh, I'm sitting with a little bit of um, not necessarily disagreement, but just pondering, and it kind of is a little bit in line. Uh, I think about what your book, but there's a rolfer who a seasoned rolfer who. Um, his name's Michael. I can't remember his last name, but he got in a biking accident and he's now quadriplegic. Mm -hmm. And so he clearly isn't holding a structurally sound form, but Mm -hmm. he's doing virtual distance structural integration work. And I don't know exactly what his medium is, but it sounds, it's coming from an energetic form. So does the practitioner have to inhabit this? sound structure <laughs> to be able to deliver the work and i'm also <laughs> speaking I as- <laughs> love what you said and i have heard of this practitioner and i myself am exploring the quantum field through my meditation practice and that's growing into a very real experience for me so i understand where another practitioner can be coming from that energetic quantum field and getting results and i myself uh have not ventured into that realm and i i guess uh, my meditation is plenty for me right now and i haven't had the need to to try and do that as a practitioner and so i'm right now sitting in the nitty-gritty of the nuts and bolts of the 10 series and i'm making sure that i get my goals done as well as possible with the client with what i can do with the client and then um as their bodies become balanced more and during the process of the series i start sharing with them the idea that their line which most practitioners think of as a structural landmark in the body as the central vertical axis To me, the line is also energetic. And I think that's the value of what I got, particularly in my training with the Guild, because that's one of the main mission statements of the Guild, is to explore the energetic quality of the line. And Emmett was a master about that. And he would talk about it in different ways, and it would make me wonder and ponder And eventually I started having my own experiences in my body. So I I became able to relate to the words that I read. It wasn't just reading words, it was an experience. So with my clients, as their bodies gain more structural integrity, I coach them on how to visualize their energetic line their structural line also being an energetic line that's connecting them with larger fields of energy, the earth energy, the heavenly energy is what I call them in my book, the universal energies. That's part of the quantum field. Those are the quantum field. They're the background energy that everything swims in. And why is it that our bodies would not be made able to transmit, conduct, and receive those energies to enliven us. It's part of the experience of having a human body. So through different experiences, I've come into those energetic flows. And now I'm sharing that as potential and experience with my clients. Could you share a little bit about the science behind this? Because I think... Yes. From, you know, we as practitioners, you know, I think a lot of people who are already in this field get it, whether they're articulating or not. It's something that's like you're definitely going to feel it in the systems. Sure. But for some of the listeners who could be curious about the work and but are probably the skeptics and Sure. Like, what are, are these yeah. woohoo people? What are they talking about? <laughs> oh man, I had an eye opening, awakening experience back in 2006 when I got to meet, meet Dr. James L. Oshman. And the first time I met him was at the first 
IAZI Symposium in Bellevue, Washington, back in 2006. He was one of their main presenters, and introducing him was Rosemary Fidus. So Rosemary Fidus ends her opening statements with the question, what is gravity? <laughs> she asks this question, right? And I'm sitting almost in the front row, and I'm astounding myself as I watch my hand raising <laughs> to answer her question. And I don't think she imagined that anybody was going to try and answer the question, <laughs> right? So she calls on me, and um, I'm shaken. And <laughs> And I go ahead and I stand and I, I feel my feet. I notice where my feet are. I notice where the top of my head is. I look around at the room, just a sea of really intelligent faces. And I start to talk about these energy flows that I feel in my body that feel like on the inside as I visualize them, they're, they're light. It's, it's light that's moving through me. And the essence of it feels like love. And embedded within that, uh, that light and that love is information at times. So I start sharing these experiences of what it feels like in my body. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing heads nod and I'm seeing people shaking their head like, what the heck is she talking about, right? So um, I felt like I did a good job with that and I sat down and then Dr. Oshman was introduced and as it was, my words I felt were a perfect segue into Dr. Oshman's topic on the living matrix. So have, have either of you heard of those, that term, the living matrix? Yep. Okay, so the living matrix is a term that's coined by Dr. Oshman. He came up with that. Dr. Oshman studied in the 70s. He was mentored by Albert St. Giorgi, who discovered in the laboratory that the, the proteins of the connective tissue, when hydrated, were actually semiconductive of fast moving subatomic particles and waves that were protons, electrons. And Sant Giorgi surmised that our connective tissue is a liquid crystalline matrix that has the ability to conduct, receive, and interpret these subatomic particles and waves and the information that they carry with them and through the connective tissues of the body they're connected into every nook and cranny and cell of the body and this is how information moves in the body at quantum speeds so when Oshman started speaking and did this PowerPoint and he was really funny and I was just on the edge of my seat because he was speaking the science that I had not heard that um, my soul was really resonating with. And it helped me understand the energetic flows that I had been experiencing in my own bodies since I was quite young. So structural integration, yoga, meditation, there's a lot of different ways of um, clearing the connective tissue, organizing the connective tissue, organizing the body segments. And in doing that, uh, Dr. Rolf knew that as we organize the body, we, um, we can then be supported by the beneficial energy of gravity. And when I first heard those words, when Dr. Rolf uh, spoke about the, uh, I never met her, but Emmett would speak about her, right? So I was told that Dr. Rolf spoke about beneficial aspects of, of gravity as it related to the human energy field. And I really wondered for a long time as a young practitioner, what the heck 
they were talking about. And then through my own experiences, I came to realize that as we balance, as practitioners, as we assist with the balancing of the connective tissues, the clearing, the opening, the release, as we organize the major segments, that the subtle energy flows that are there on the surface of the earth as a reservoir of electrons, that's the electromagnetic field of the earth. And then that the heavenly energies, the electromagnetic field of the sun and the celestial bodies above us, those energies are able to move into the body and they're able to um, assist with healing, with, um, with perhaps you could call them gifts, gifts of um, maybe a higher level of intuition with knowing. These things happen when people get connected with these larger fields. Betsy Seiss spoke about that in her book, The Rolfing Experience. I, uh, I read that back in 2007, and I had a very, um, very remarkable experience after reading um, a paper that Emmett Hutchins had written. It was unpublished, and Betsy went ahead and had it published in her book. And Emmett wrote about how when the root chakra is aligned with the earth and the crown chakra is aligned, he was asking, could, it, um, could the alignment of those support greater gifts within that person? So when, when I read that, I... You know, I felt like they were speaking about me because I've, I've had different experiences in my, in my body, in my life that might seem um, a little bit more than the normal. <laughs> so um, I felt like, um, like Emmett was really on to something. And during my classes with him, he would refer to that but not really go into it in detail. So this is something that I pondered and something that I developed as I matured and had more experience with. I hope that makes some sense to you guys. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and there's there's something I wanna say is that I'm glad you mentioned Betsy's book because I felt in a lot of ways your book would be a great sort of like bundle together. Yeah, book. There's it's like a sequel. A, yeah, yeah, very, very much. So. There, yeah. there, there's a, there was a similar feeling of it to me. Definitely. Um, uh, there's a lot of stuff when I when I was reading your book. I remember thinking like they would go very well uh, as a set together. Well said. Uh, and there's sort of something you said there, which I want to tie back into to how I heard Nikki asking the question before how I heard it. We'll see if it's the same way, which is about the experience. So similar to when you were saying how you had the experience you didn't feel that your rolfer had pelvic in a way so his his knowledge was limited somewhat by his experience which is not to say that he or someone couldn't do the work from there but the potential is of having an experience of something can lead to a, a greater awareness of that not to say that it definitely will and so to tie it into what you were saying nikki about the rolfer again how i heard it that person although paraplegic now their potential may have been they may have known about that before they may have had that body before now they're in a different state but that current state doesn't necessarily negate all previous things yeah. and i mean this doesn't really give an answer because i generally never do, but it's to have an openness of the possibility. So same when you were talking about all of these experiences you've had in your life, they don't mean that you can do this or share this better or, or worse, but they're, you're having these experiences as a potential that you're now recognizing, realizing 
yeah. and you're able to sort of share that yes. in your own way. Yeah. Thank you so much. You you worded that really well, and I've never put that into my own words, and you just did. <laughs> so thank you. Dr. Rolf spoke about practitioners being educators, and actually like educators first, and that gravity is the therapist. So again, I had to really, for years, think about what is it that Dr. Rolf meant by that? And my sense is that as I've gotten more experienced with the work, um, I can be more of a coach for people as they go through the work. I can sense where they're at in the process and guide them and let them know that, you know, the next session will be addressing what's coming up for them now. You know, things like that as far as the structural integration work goes. And because of my own experiences on the energetic level, I'm able to start coaching them about the energetic aspect of their own nature and how to relate to it through their line. Yeah, I was just being careful to not send a message that in order to be a good practitioner, you had to have this perfect structure because there's no Correct. Thing. Totally. Well so, said, Nikki. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and I heard, I sort of heard both, and that's what I was trying to more or less to do is to add that potential. So hopefully that bridged yeah. everything up. We practitioners are all so unique, and our clients are all so unique, and we all bring who we are to the table, you know? And this work of structural integration is, has so much transformative potential. And it transforms not only the physical body, but the mental, the emotional, the spiritual. There's so much opening that goes on for people. And I think if, if we can encourage people to say that, yes, that does happen and it is okay, you know, then they can be more comfortable with the other changes that are emerging within them during the process of the work. One of the things that, like, uh, you, when you mentioned gravity is the healer, that I, I mean, I'm the least seasoned out of all of you for rolfing. So, and I think that I'll actually kind of tie into what I'm saying here, which is that when I think about rolfisms, I like comparing what I think now versus a year ago, you know, and then in five years, same to be like, oh, this is what she meant. And then coming back to it and saying, oh, okay, I, I thought it was that, but now I can see it's actually this. And is that ever adapting of, yes. of it's a progressive experience right and we bring our own progression with us into the treatment room <laughs> and our clients do too it's pretty cool the sharing that can go on and the learning yeah yeah my biggest attraction to rolfing and to want to become a rolfer was not necessarily about wanting to be able to to treat people's pain, but what for me it was to help facilitate a deeper relationship with your body. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I first got Rolf because I was suffering from back pain. I, my scoliosis started showing up, and um, and you know I felt better. It wasn't like this crazy, you know, miraculous feeling. But yeah, it was when I went through my training that, and again, I had this long journey of why I ended up going. It was mostly, but again, it was because of an influence with occupational therapy and back to here we are presented with some limitations. How do you live with it? How do you learn from it? How do you embody? And so, yeah, when I went through my training is when my greatest passion started evolving with the work. Right, right. That's great. Dr. Rolf once said, um, I'm going to paraphrase something like she wasn't into necessarily fixing things. Uh, actually, I think this was Rosemary Fidus said this about Dr. Rolf. She said Dr. Rolf was after bigger fish. It, she wasn't necessarily about trying to fix stuff in the body. Dr. Rolf wanted to create a greater human being. 
And so again, those are words to ponder. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> so yeah, yeah I mean, I'm grateful that the structural work can address our ills and our our imbalances and our pains. And yet we are more than just the physical and the work can address that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, to be a, a bridge again, I, I got into this similar for a lot about that similar like Nikki said to to continue to help myself in relation to my body and to help others sure. and then to sort of think about what is a human body what is the human experience and then yeah. you know if we're willing to go there to open that broader up which we don't have enough time for today but it does I mean it does uh, I don't know if we have enough time in our lifetime actually for that <laughs> um, but it, it does relate to, to a lot of what what you're speaking about which is is that beautiful and it's one of the beautiful things that I love about Rolfing and structural integration work. Apologies, guild people. Um, <laughs> because because it's not, it doesn't have to be just about pushing tissue as a lot of other body-based modalities can be. Um, so what prompted you to write a book? Oh my gosh. Well, I had a client on my table who was brought to me by a woman named Andrini Husbands. And Andrini is a twin. And while I was working with her mother on the table, we were having these marvelous conversations, three-way conversations between Andrini and the mother and I about the work. And Andrini, Andrini looked at me and said, Jean Louise, you need to duplicate yourself. And when she said that, I started thinking about, um, you know, a book. And, and I said, well, I, I, under, I got the message that I'm supposed to write a book, but I don't really know how to organize it, you know. And I wanted to write the book particularly for my clients because as I've acquired, you know, some some wisdom as I have been moving along in my 29 years now. I wanted to share that information with my clients to optimize their own SI experience. So I wanted to be able to give them some of the different things that I've learned and, you know, the wisdoms of master teachers and other clients who have shared things, you know. So <laughs> when I when I said that well, underneath I'm, I would like to do that, um, and a book would be great. But I really don't know what I'm doing with that. And she said to me at that moment that she and her sisters had completed their Masters of Information Technology at Chico State, and they were ready to take on a project. And she said she discussed this with her sister and get back to me. So her sister was game to meeting me and I brought them to my home and we went into the kitchen and I brought out a stack of books, of notebooks from trainings, of notes that I've kept about um, my work with different clients. I mean, just a lot of information. And they said, wow, you are certainly not short of content. <laughs> so <laughs> these two women, they, I call them my angels. They took me on and we used Skype and get this, you guys, they dedicated six years of their lives to support my book every other Thursday for six years. <laughs> Wow. And what a treat. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so awesome. Six years. Six years. I was going to ask you how long yeah. did it take? Six years, girl. Yeah. So the information that's in that book is ripe for now because the quantum is, people are getting tuned into the quantum. There's a documentary coming out really soon. I, I wanted to bring it up. It's called Thrive 2 by Foster Gamble. It's coming out in September. Thrive, Thrive, the first Thrive video was awesome. <laughs> and it showed the Taurus of the body. And again, science 
that helped me understand the electromagnetic field around the body and the shape of that field and how every living thing has that same shape of the electromagnetic field. And energy moves in through the top and it comes in through the bottom and it circulates around. That's our life force energy. That's chi. That's the stuff people talk about in qigong and acupuncture. That's what the line is about. You know, it's the center of the toroidal field of the body. It's, it's an access point into those larger fields. So anyway, back to Anjuni and Anjuna. Cheers to those guys and kudos to them. And they were the ones that invited me to um, consider bringing in the psycho-emotional themes from the Heller work because I had shared that information from them from one of my trainings. And they said, Jean Louise, you got to put that in. And then Andrini also said, Jean Louise, you got to go into the energetic aspect of the line. So without their input, those things would not have happened. And I want to thank right now the Heller Work community, particularly um, Robert Carl Scherzinger at the time. I'm not sure if he's still the president of Heller Work International. And at the time that I was requesting the use of their materials, he was the president of their board and their board of directors um, allowed me to utilize the psycho-emotional themes from the 1991 Heller Work Handbook, which I feel are very appropriate with the structural integration work. So my appreciation and gratitude to the Heller Work um, International community for the uh, use of those and for their permission to do that. Um, and also to Oshman, oh my gosh, James Oshman, not only did he give me permission to utilize his materials, he asked to look at my manuscript and he actually um, proved all of the science in my book. He, pr he read the whole thing. And he would tell me, well, instead of that, you could say this, you know, <laughs> and he'd write it out for me. And then, and then I'd find, you know, I'd find the citations and stuff to back that up. And um, so Oshman, when I, when I got up the courage to ask him if he would consider writing my foreword, he said, I've already started on it, which was fabulous. And when I first spoke with Dr. Oshman, I asked him, Dr. Oshman, is this uh, book even worth your time and effort? Is my manuscript even worth your time and effort? And he said to me, Jean Louise, this is a very important structural integration book. He said, I have waited for a book like this on structural integration for a very long time. He said, you have put into words very complex concepts, and you've done it in a way that's better than anything I've seen. <laughs> and at that point, I did the happy dance on the phone with Dr. Oshman. <laughs> what a great compliment. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. it is. It's so true. And there's... This work is so pr profound, but there's still so little literature on it. And especially, you know, the Rolf Institute, and maybe this is from historical yes. issues sure. of the recipe getting out. Mm -hmm. But the recipe, you know, it's already out. So why not talk about it and talk about it with brilliance? Because we all know that the truth is that the blessing in the series isn't really what it is. It's how it's delivered. It's from the practitioner. It's from the, the relationship that develops and evolves. Yeah. So it's, it's great that Thank you. you wrote such a, a great book. And thank you. You know, thank you very, very much, Nikki. Um, Dr. Rolf did an incredible service to us when she brought in the recipe. And um, there was a person that, um, I think it was Neil, Neil Powers. Oh, I'm getting um, some people mixed up. 
Neil was the practitioner who I couldn't remember. I'm so sorry, Neil. In my, I'm in the practitioner level of my training. Uh, but anyway, Dr. Rawls recipe has been described as a revolutionary sequence. Uh, Arthur Bell said that. And um, Emmett told us about that years ago. And it's a real classical revolutionary sequence that has significant order within it. So um, there, there is magic in that recipe. And I, and I really feel that the recipe, as Emmett had said, is not to be discarded or changed. It's meant to be gone into in all of its depths and metaphors. <laughs> Emmett said that very poetically. And, you know, as I've continued to work with the 10 session series recipe through the years, um, it continues showing me um, its order. And, and I'm very grateful. I met you on, uh, I think, a, a Zoom cast with Ruthie. And your story kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Ruthie's sort of, cause she's also an author and it was really a bit of a twist of fate that got her to write her book. And I, I hadn't known the similarities in both of yours, but when I met you guys on the podcast, there was something where I, I sort of felt this connection between the both of you uh, yeah. in some sort of way, almost sort of maybe like a fairy godmother kind of, kind of thing. <laughs> I, I wanted to start turning Ruthie on to some of the quantum stuff about the energetics. And um, I actually did send her one of my blogs that uh, was about a fire ceremony that I did. I've also studied um, kind of ancient um, Vedic practices. And I've one of my uh, spiritual teachers um, lived in India and I had an opportunity to travel there in 1984 and experience another aspect of myself from that perspective. And I sensed that Ruthie had, um, like, um, she had ceremony and ancient practices as one of the things that she mentioned that were dear to her. So I thought, all right, Ruthie, I think you'd, you'd like this one. So I have been blogging, not recently, but over COVID uh, during the quarantine. Oh man, I got some really good uh, blogs done and published on my website. Uh, that, rep, that website is jeanlouisegreenrolfpractitioner.com. And uh, I also have a newsletter that uh, I've been sending information out and I've got some uh, videos of my book launch in Chico, which was a fabulous event. It was so fun. So those are on there and other podcasts that I've gratefully been able to do um, with people from my publisher. So Inner Traditions has been uh, really good in helping me connect with podcasters as well and some of those are on my website <clears throat> and we we have a when we put this up there'll be a link for that as well so people can, cool. can click on the link so they don't have to remember all the letters they can just click it down yeah yeah, yeah thank you um yeah i just i really love how the book came together and um Part one is a great introduction of Dr. Rolf. And I go into my own story of finding the work. And then I go into uh, uh, Oshman and St. Giorgi's uh, work on the quantum aspect of the connective tissue. And then I go into rotation patterns. So part one is loaded. And the, uh, the chiropractor that I was referring to earlier said that there are so many gold nuggets in my book and she keeps coming back all excited about a, another gold nugget that she found. And one of them was really interesting to me. In part three, I have a section called support tools. So this is a section where I've put in 
tools that I feel can help people continue to balance their structurally integrated body. So there's information that I've learned through my own journey as a human being and a structural integrator on nutrition, on um, the five Tibetan rites, which I love doing, on meditation. And there's a section in there also on, it's called tending to the emotional body. So um, one of my clients uh, also has limes and she noticed that once she read the section on tending to the emotional body, it clicked into her that that was an, a really important next piece for her because she realized that when she was thinking about her limes and her symptoms, her symptoms would escalate and she'd feel even worse. So she had developed um, patterns in her brain for actually activating her symptoms and tending to the emotional body goes into the work of Claire Weeks, who has a way of desensitizing these um, anxious illnesses that can derive from uh, real, you know, significant conditions that people are dealing with. And when she came back, she said, oh my gosh, I read that over and over and I get it now. So when thoughts come up about her dis-ease, um, she is letting those thoughts surface. She's feeling the symptoms. She's not giving them more due attention than that. And she's letting those feelings dissipate. So instead of activating the sympathetic, she's allowing her body to go into more of a parasympathetic uh, nervous system. Um, and, and I just thought that was so beautiful. And she, she described that so well, and she was so appreciative of finding that information in my book. It really made me happy. I can echo that on behalf of a good friend of mine who suffers from Lyme. And um, she also, she went through a nutrition program. She did all sorts of things to help rid her body of the toxicity that the Lyme disease creates. But she also noticed that when there is emotional distress, and she definitely has some situations that are very triggering, that the line, she would, it would flare back up. And yeah, that yeah. she had to do a lot of work. She kind of bridged, I'm mean, looking forward to sharing what's in your book with her. Yes. Because, um, yeah, she just kind of from subjective point of view, just realized she was like, man. When, yeah. When, Things you have good. to change the thought process. It, it has to be done. We can't keep digging those same neural pathways that are creating suffering. It, it has to be done differently. Yeah. And it's possible. And Claire Weeks wrote two books on that. And I just pulled out some gems from it, you know? Yeah. And then also in part three is a section on meditation and uh, I utilized information from um, Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza, uh, from his book, You Are the Placebo. And he goes into the neuroscience around meditation. And he helps take people into the quantum aspect of meditation. And to me, that's a really significant place because that's a place where we can meet our inner guidance and we can really evolve as human beings on that level as well so and and meditation in through meditation you can also um clear emotional and mental distress you know it's kind of like what the line is to my physical body emotion uh the um okay so what the line is to my physical body um meditation is for my mental, emotional, and spiritual body. So those are really important pieces. And nowadays with the stress that we live within, people need to know how to discharge that stress. We need tools. And there are ways to find our way into it. And, and it does take um, some focus and attention. 
and it's possible and and it can work <laughs> yeah you keep on reminding me of this uh experience i had when i was in bali almost 20 well it was 20 years ago it was in 2000 and i went on this sacred site tour and i'm with a group of people and we um the, our guide takes us into this particular cave where there's this flat stone and it's where they would lay the, the spiritual leaders that's gone, where they died. And, and it was beautiful stone. I mean, you could definitely see how well used it was because it definitely had its softness. And we're in pitch dark and we're all circled around this stone and we kind of, our guide leads us into this meditation and then and i'm starting to feel this connection to the earth and and it comes on strong and then we start oming and man i had this like it was I mean, the earth like gripped my feet like held me so still and it goes up through my legs through my line through my axial body and we're holding hands. And so, and I'm not trembling. I'm, I feel like I'm alone in this. Like, I feel like I've just turned into a statue in a way. Oh, but I'm awesome. holding hands with um, people that, or that are also on this trip. And so, and it was crazy because I'm kind of in my own head being like, what was that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, and then we walk out of this dark cave and I'm like now moved by emotions and I'm like kind of crying and I go find a spot and, um, and these two people come ne separately. They come and ask me like, um, what was happening to you? I felt this, I felt connected to you. And it was like, they didn't have that same thing with the other person that they were holding hands to. I was like, I don't know. And it was, it was so wild and so moving. And then it was like very surreal coming out of that because then coming out of this cave, there's like, you know, few, you know, neighbors down there like having this, they're slaughtering a pig. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so it was like having this like full on earth moment. And then there's like a slaughtering happening. And it was just so yeah crazy and that's awesome. energetic and yeah. but it was interesting too because you, you know I've been in a lot of kind of situations where you can kind of get in your own space and feel things but then to have someone feel it through you yeah and I'm young I'm fresh out of college like this is this, like I was cultivating this stuff yeah. you know yeah. so yeah you that's keep on beautiful. reminding Reminding me of that. That I it I sense that you had an experience of your essential self, of the energetics that you are, the energy that runs through you. Yeah. That is so awesome. It's yeah. it's interesting just because today randomly I was watching a YouTube about Shakti Pot, which I don't know yeah. about Shakti. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is essentially the, the guru more or less bringing that exact yeah. presence yeah, on yeah. what you're talking about, Nikki. So and it's cool. I don't. It's not something I would normally like throw on YouTube, and it just kind of I got yeah. in a wormhole. So it's interesting how that all. Yeah, ties in. you got it. Yeah, I had Shakti Pot back in 1984 from the um, kind of like the second. Well, I don't know, like the assistant or the right hand man of of Baba G. <laughs> Prem Baba was his name, and. Mm. I was at this ashram in the northern Himalayas. It was really remote there. Yet you had to do five river crossings to get there or take an elephant trail to get in, right? An elephant ride. Anyway, while I was there, this old fellow would hit me on the back really hard sometimes. And I turned around, I'm like, what the heck? And it was only years later that I realized he was moving my energy. And then later, during that experience of being there, I went into the cave where Babaji had appeared, and my body became a conduit of <clears throat> moving his energy through me after he died while I was there. It was crazy. <laughs> but I wouldn't have been able to do those things probably with, without 
you know, also having some assistance to move the energy. So that was, that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, there was one more thing about part two in my book. I do go through the sessions and I love the write up that I've done with those. There's energetic practices of experiencing the line with each session and it's progressive. It builds that experience of being able to experience the energetics of the line continues to grow as the body becomes more and more balanced. So um, I really like how that turned out. And I was just reading that myself this morning. And in preparation for this um, podcast interview, I thought, well, I'm going to read my own book. I haven't read it for a while. <laughs> and I was so pleased with um, how, yeah, man, it, it it's a good book. And yeah, it's it, a good book. It's a good, and yeah. I'll just sort of go. What I what I really enjoyed about it um, is, and I'm sure I'm guessing this was the the principle was that it's for rolfers, but it's also for like regular people who don't know what rolfing yes. is. Yes. And so it's really nice. And and I think that different sections may resonate with different people. I resonated with all of them, but some people might be like, that's that's too scientific but I, I, I'm relating to this, or this isn't scientific enough, but here it is. And it's just written in a very nice, I didn't really want to put it down. I read it pretty quickly, actually. Yeah. Um, and similar, like I, I was taking nuggets out and taking like a picture of some and sharing with some friends, being like, ah, you know, some rolfing friends. Hey, look yeah. at this. This I'm really resonating with this. Um, but no, I, I feel that it, it is, it's a nice part of the toolkit we can have as body <laughs> workers or as just humans on the, on the path. And one thing I will mention is, um, and the link we'll have, you gave us a, a link where people can can buy the book and get practitioner discounts, I think you said. Yeah. So I'll, I'll yeah. put that in the mm -hmm. blob. That's super. Thank you. Yeah. I actually consider this book to be something like um, a manual for the human body. Like we weren't born with uh, like a manual, you know, of how it all works. <laughs> But I think I came kind of close to explaining a lot of stuff in there. And um, and I think I did it in a way that's quite understandable with, um, you know, the for the person off the street that wonders how they can optimize themselves or they wonder, what is this stuff that I hear about Rolfing or Strux Integration, you know? Or what is this about the about energy medicine, what's that mean, you know? And I think that as a species with the quickened energies that we're all being exposed to, I think the energetic aspect of ourselves is gonna be coming more to the forefront of our awareness. It is part of who we are. And uh, I think the Thrive 2 video is gonna really help bring that out too. Uh, I think they they're I think it, they've done a really good job with what I've seen from the trailer. Um, also, this book is not just for structural integrators; it's for all kinds of body workers. Um, the chiropractor that I worked with said all chiropractors should read this book <laughs> because she was so taken by her understanding of um, the rotation pattern the rotation pattern part of the book, and also the, uh, the idea of the connective tissue being conductive. And there were so many pieces to that that she found supported her own process. So yeah, it's good. I think I put in just about, there was one story I didn't get to, um, but I'll share that real quick if I may. It won't take long. All right. All right, one of my clients uh, is a seventh generation cowboy from the Vina area, okay? And this guy came in with two hip replacements and I started a first on him and he looked at me and he said, you're taking out the reason why I had to get my hips replaced. Like he realized it really quickly, okay? We did a great job on his series and he was doing so much better after that and then he's continued to come in occasionally and i think it was like maybe two years ago he came in and 
he was um, really in a bad way. Uh, a lot of limping going on. Had, I hadn't touched in with him for, for a while. So I get him on the table and two out of the three sessions that we had done up to that point, we had to stop because he was cramping. And I kept telling him, you know, you need to get some minerals in your body, especially magnesium. And you need to be eating good quality salt, salt that has all of the trace minerals in it still unprocessed salt would be really good. So I'm just recommending these to him and he's going up in the hills with his cows and he's forgetting to take his stuff. And the next time when he cramped, I said to him, you know, it's, this really isn't working. I mean, I, you really need to get these things in your body because we're not able to get the work done. I said, um, I'll schedule you and if you don't start taking those minerals, I, I really don't think it's worth coming in. So he heard that and um, he started taking the minerals and taking the, the salt in a solution called the Soleil that I write about in the book. It's a concentrated salt solution that you dilute. And um, anyway, when he got on the table, his body was totally different. When I had been working with him, his body was really hard. You know, the tissues were really dense. It was very difficult to work with him. And when I touched in the next time after he had hydrated from taking the minerals, he actually, his tissue was as soft as butter. I'm not kidding. He, it really was. It was that big of a difference. So he continued taking these things and when I touch in on him now it really is so easy to work with him and he realizes how important it is to do those things on uh, a regular basis so I want you to know that I've got information uh, you know kind of similar about that in the nutrition section um, in part three where I go into the importance of minerals the importance of certain kinds of water the pH of the body. I mean, all of that stuff is significant in terms of not putting stress back into the body. Great. So cool. true. I mean, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're in a state of um, really needing to be aware of what's optimal for the body. And if possible, you know, have access to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jean Louise, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, Thank you. You're, you're one of the one of the many people who I've met during COVID and really appreciated uh, the, the conversations and the time and the talks and, and the sharing with. So I'm grateful for your Thank time you so today, much, Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, Nikki, it was a, you as well. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Yes, it was a pleasure to to virtually meet you, and I look forward to your book. Oh, awesome. It. Awesome. You guys right. are awesome. Thank you. We think we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. May all right. you all be safe and well. Thank, Thank you. you. The work that you're doing. You too, Jean. Very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank great. you. Thanks, Jean. Have a great rest of the day. All right. Take care. Bye. Well, all right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening to us at Touching Into Presence. We hope you enjoyed today's conversation. You can find out more about Jean Louise Green at Jean Louise Green Rolf Practitioner .com. Please feel free to leave us positive reviews on your favorite podcast aggregators. And please share us with people who may be of interest. We do this for all of you out there. We hope we're making a difference in your world. We look forward to hearing back from you and seeing you on our next conversation at Touching Into Presence. Bye-bye.